Okay, well, good morning everybody again. Today I'm going to read to you from my book, Josh Insights Book 1. And this is taken from Chapter 14. It's a very funny story, this. This is supposedly the origin of how the Egyptians got their name Pharaoh. Very funny story. But it's such a good story, I'll just let it speak for itself. The chapter 14, book of Jasher, or in my book, Jasher Insights, book 1, chapter 14. In those days there was in the land of Shinar, Shinar meaning land of the giants. So there was in the land of Shinar a wise man who had understanding and all wisdom, and of a beautiful appearance, but he was poor and indignant. And his name was Rikon. And he was hard set to support himself. And he resolved to go to Egypt to Osiris. Yeah, Osiris was the king at the time. The son of Anon, the king of Egypt, to show the king his wisdom. For perhaps he might find grace in his sight. To raise him up and give him maintenance. And Rikion did so. And when Rikion came to Egypt, he asked the inhabitants of Egypt concerning the king and the inhabitants of Egypt told him the custom of the king of Egypt for it was then the custom of the king of Egypt that when he went from his royal palace and was seen abroad only one day in a year and after that the king would return to his palace to remain there and on that day when the king went forth he passed judgment in the land and everyone having a suit came before the king and that day to obtain his request, here talking suit meaning an argument, dispute. And when Rikion heard of the custom in Egypt, and that he could not come into the presence of the king, he grieved greatly, he was very sorrowful. And in the evening Rikion went out and found a house in ruins, formerly a bakehouse in Egypt, And he abode there all night in bitterness of soul, and pinched with hunger, and sleep was removed from his eyes. And Rikion considered within himself what he should do in a town until the king made his appearance, and how he might maintain himself there. And he arose in the morning, and walked about, and met in his way those that sold vegetables and various sorts of seed, and with which they supplied the inhabitants. And Rikion wished to do the same in order to get a maintenance in the city. But he was unacquainted with the custom of the people, who was like a blind man among them. And he went and obtained vegetables to sell them for his support. And the rabble assembled around him and ridiculed him and took his vegetables from him and left him nothing. And he rose up from there in bitterness of soul and went sighing to the bakehouse in which he had remained all the night before and he slept there the second night. Well, on that night he reasoned with himself how he could save himself from starvation and he devised a scheme how to act. And he rose up in the morning and he acted ingeniously and he went and hired thirty strong men of the rabble carrying their war instruments in their hands led them to the top the Egyptian sepulchre and he placed them there. And he commanded them, saying, Thus saith the king, Strengthen yourselves and be valiant men, and let no man be buried here until two hundred pieces of silver be given, and then he may be buried. And those men, men did according to the order of Rikion, to the people of Egypt, the whole of that year. Well, this is interesting, isn't it? This guy had no money, so what does he do? He pretends he has money. He makes out like he's somebody great and the right hand of the king himself. Orders some strong soldiers. Look, you get up there and start taking 200 pieces of silver from each person. Wow. Sounds like what they do in high finance in this world. There's no money. Pretend there's some money. Make money out of hot air. My goodness, that's what Rikion was doing. But they believed him. Soldiers just obey orders, so 
they took him to be some really smart person because he was smart, but he was also lying through the teeth. <laughs> and in eight months' time, Rikion and his men gathered great riches of silver and gold. And Rikion took a great quantity of horses and other animals, and he hired more men, and he gave them horses, and they remained with him. When the year came around, at the time the king went forth into the town, all the inhabitants of Egypt assembled together to speak to him concerning the work of Rikion and his men. And the king went forth on the appointed day, and all the Egyptians came before him and cried unto him, saying, May the king live forever. What is this thing that thou do in the town to thy servants, and not to suffer a dead body to be buried till so much silver and gold be given? Was there ever the like unto this day done in the whole earth, from the days of former kings, yea, even from the days of Adam until this day, that the dead should not be buried? For a set price. We know it to be the custom of kings to take a yearly tax from the living, but thou dost not only do this, but from the dead also they exact a tax day by day. Now, O king, we can no more bear this. The whole city is ruined on this account, and dost thou not know it? And when the king heard all that had been spoken, he was very wroth, and his anger burned within him at this affair. For he had know nothing of it. And the king said, Who? Where is he who dares to do this wicked thing in my land without my command? Surely you will tell me. And they told him all the works of Rikion and his men. And the king's anger was aroused, and he ordered Rikion and his men to be brought before him. And Rikion took about a thousand children, sons and daughters, clothed them in silk and embroidery, and he set them upon horses, and sent them to the king by means of his men. He also took a great quantity of silver and gold and precious stones and strong and beautiful horses as a present for the king, with which he came before the king and bowed down to the earth before him. And the king, his servants, and all the inhabitants of Egypt wondered at the work of Rikion. And they saw his riches and the present that he brought to the king, and it greatly pleased the king, and he wondered at it. And when Rikion sat before him, the king asked him concerning all his works. And Rikion spoke all his words wisely before the king, his servants, and all the inhabitants of Egypt. And when the king heard the words of Rikion and his wisdom, Rikion found grace in his sight, and he met with grace and kindness from all the servants of the king, and from all the inhabitants of Egypt, on account of his wisdom and excellent speeches. From that time they loved him exceedingly. And the king answered and said to Rikion, Thy name shall no more be called Rikion, but Pharaoh shall be thy name, since thou dost exact a tax from the dead. And he called his name Pharaoh. And the king and his subjects loved Rikion for his wisdom, and he consulted with all the inhabitants of Egypt to make him prefect under the king. And all the inhabitants of Egypt and his wise men did so, and made a law in Egypt. And they made Rikion Pharaoh prefect under Osiris, king of Egypt, and Rikion Pharaoh governor over Egypt, daily administrating justice to the whole city. But Osiris the king would judge the people of the land one day in the year, when he went out to make his appearance. And Rikion Pharaoh cunningly usurped the government of Egypt, and he exacted a tax from all the inhabitants of Egypt. And all the inhabitants of Egypt greatly loved Rikion Pharaoh, and they made a decree to call every king that should reign over them and their seed in Egypt Pharaoh. Very interesting story. Whether it's true or not, or whether it's a fable, or whether it's an interesting parable. Well, that's up to you to decide. <laughs> anyway, I put analysis on this story. I found out some very interesting information about this story, actually. Analysis of Rikion. The word Rikion in Pharaoh. The origin of the word pharaoh means a great house, see Wikipedia. However, it is indeed possible that if such a character as Rikion ever existed, it is likely that he, being given the title of pharaoh, would be more remembered for his great wealth, and thus the definition of the word pharaoh is given in modern times as simply great house. The fact that Rikion levied a dead person's tax on the people of ancient times 
wouldn't be remembered so much because he became very popular with both the king and the people of Egypt, in spite of his great deceits. The word Pharaoh eventually came to represent great power and great wealth, eventually adopted as a title for kings. Rikion became rich by both deceitful and corruptible means, was actually rewarded for his wickedness instead of punished. Sounds familiar in this world, those who rule. Word definitions. The word Rika in the word Rikion. Rika. Definition. Popularity, eternal ruler, charismatic, intuitive, pleasant personality. And the definition goes far back in time and is mentioned in the language of many countries. The word Aeon in the word Rikion. Definition means to agree, to conform, to go along with. It also means to arrange according to size, to size up, to form an opinion. I found it very unusual obtaining these definitions to the word Rikion, and is certainly all more than apply to the character Rikion mentioned in the book of Jasher. Other observations. The Egyptians glorified the dead both as the gods of the underworld and with the hope of resurrection. They mummified the dead and so Rikion's tricks to not allow the dead to be buried until the people paid him 200 pieces silver each was a terrible insult to the Egyptians. So much so, they would have indeed been willing to pay the tax as they wanted their relatives to be buried in the correct manner in order for them to be ready for the resurrection in the afterlife. So it was indeed a very cunning and crafty plan that Rikion made. The word Pharaoh means a great house. I would presume to imagine that here it's referring to the great pyramids of Egypt. For my research, from my research, I do not believe the Egyptians actually built the pyramids. I believe they were built by very advanced pre-flood civilizations such as the Atlanteans. The Egyptians merely adopted the pyramids and used them to bury their pharaohs, but that was not the main purpose of the pyramids, which are aligned to the stars when they were originally built before the flood. What was the original purpose of the pyramids? That itself is a very good question, which I will not attempt to answer in this particular study. The fact that Rikion was named the first pharaoh by the king of Egypt, who was in fact called Osiris. Osiris ended up making Rikion his prefect, second under himself. Rikion ended up taking up the whole government of Egypt through deceit and through his smooth tongue. He continued to tax the entire population of Egypt, and yet it says that people loved him. Rikion sounds more like a deceptive, very manipulative prankster that everybody came to admire, in the same morbid way that people today admire a very evil person who is in fact a prankster, like the Joker character in Batman. Whether the story of Rikion is true, or just perhaps a parable, it is, however, very true to life on Earth, and how the planet is indeed run by pranksters such as elite rich merchants of today, as mentioned in the book of Revelation. Thus, in the way of this physical world, which constantly rewards the evil and the wicked violent doers, such as merchants who rule the planet by deceit and violent oppression of all, with all their orchestrated wars. Hosea 12.7 He's a merchant who loves to oppress. Comment 10 According to the following link, eventually after the death of Osiris, Rikion became the ruler of Egypt and was the pharaoh of Egypt at the time that Abraham and Sarai, or Abraham and Sarai, is I went to live in Egypt because of famine in the land of Canaan. We shall see in the next chapter how Rikion Pharaoh became struck with the beauty of Sarai, Abraham's wife, or Abraham's wife, which did cause some serious problems for Abraham and Rikion. Well, you have to read the next chapters to see what happens next in the continued story of Rikion Pharaoh. Well, that was a very interesting chapter there from my book, Jasha Insights, book one. I hope you'll get my Insights books. You can find them all there at Amazon. Have a fantastic day, everybody. Have a great day.